Hey everyone, I'm Michael and welcome to a socially distant development log. Um, first of all, I want to thank everyone who showed up for the live stream the other day. Um, I, I had a lot of fun. I, I, there wasn't that many people interacting with the chat, and to be honest, I'm okay with that because, like I said in the stream, I can barely read chat. But it was nice to see that people were watching and interacting with the chat and, and interested in development of the game. Um, I'm going to be doing these streams hopefully weekly, if not bi-weekly. I just haven't figured it out yet. Either way, um, I've worked on the game a lot more since that live stream. I fixed it, I even fixed a few bugs with the actual code that we wrote in that live stream. If you missed the live stream, it is, I believe it's archived on the channel as a video that you can watch. Um, it was about implementing the file system and getting that all working and getting the terminal working inside so I distant again. Um, and I can say that it is all working, it's going perfectly well. And, in fact, what I've been working on lately is actually a rudimentary main menu and save system, and a and the network simulation. Um, so I'll show you guys all of that uh, pretty soon. Uh, first of all, I do want to give you guys another little tidbit of information of, uh, behind the scenes of socially distance development. Um, this is our next cloud board. Um, uh, we are actually using a task management system for this game. That shows you how much I care about it. Um, so, in terms of what's going on here, uh, you can see sort of what we have planned as far as features. Now, it's definitely not the most... Um, it's definitely not the most full board in the world, um, but you can see that we have quite a lot going on right now. Right now, I'm working on the networking system, and then I will be working on the email system, so in, in fact I should move this to to-do. Um, uh, terminal creature comforts is something we're working on. I still have to do the history. Uh, Tobias has done everything for that, uh, for the cursoring and everything. That was something that I showed off in the live stream. Uh, the window manager is something I'm working on. I'm mostly almost done it. And I'm working on the game design document and Desktop UI concept is being done by 11 pixels, and customization is going to be moved back to to do because I have some of it implemented, but I'm not working on it actively right now. Um, but yeah, you can see a little bit about what we're working on if you're interested. And then, of course, we're working on network simulation, which is the backbone of the entire hacking system and the entire game's gameplay. Um, and you can see that it's mostly complete. We're missing a few things, but it is mostly complete. And I'm going to show you guys what it looks like right now. So, first of all, we'll start by showing you guys the main menu. Um, now, this is not what it's supposed to look like in-game. Um, all of the different UI elements are showing because we're in edit mode right now, but as soon as we play the game... Um, it's going to pop us into full screen, and then that menu, or that new game area, which is what that was, is going to go away. Now, there's a lot missing right now in the main menu. Uh, this is not the final look. This is just, I need a main menu, and I need a way to load, save, and create games, so I need something that functions. This is not the way I want the main menu to look in the final game, so do be aware of that. Uh, but either way, we have the ability to continue a career, we can start a new career. We can access settings, which right now does nothing because I'm figuring that out. And then we can terminate the game, which again does nothing because I have to figure out how to do that. But either way, um, I'm going to start a new career and we're going to name the character, or we're, yeah, we're going to name the uh, player character Michael because my name is Michael. Um, unfortunately, the tab key does not work. I'll have to figure that out. Uh, but I'll set my username to Michael. Or actually, no, I will set it to ALKA because that is what people have started calling me in Trixel Creative. And of course, I am a male, so I'm going to use the he slash him pronoun, but you can select she slash her or they slash them. This is actually going to be important for the game's chat system. It'll be how NPCs um, refer to you in terms of gender pronouns. Uh, that's something that I'm going to be implementing. Uh, but anyway, we're going to hit the button button here, and that's going to create our save file. And it's going to immediately load in, because I'm a really great programmer and made a save system that loads almost instantly. Except, don't let that fool you, because it's only loading, like, basically nothing. 
like basically the player data and that's it. Um, when there's actual NPCs and stuff like that, of course it's going to have to spawn those NPCs in. It's going to have to create the game's routing table and all that stuff in the background. I've tried to make it as fast as it can be and I've used Unity code routines to make sure that I can actually show a loading screen instead of halting the game. But um, it's when the actual game is finished, it is not going to load that fast. Trust me, it is not. There is going to be a need for a loading screen. But uh, for now, we're in the game. And, um, all right, where do we even begin? First of all, the debug menu. Um, there's a few new debug options here. Um, uh, under sound player, I have, I've shown that on the stream, but if you missed that, let's me play sound effects that are in the game. Um, customization system, um, I can now set the wallpaper. Uh, there's only one wallpaper though, so that's not very useful, but um, eventually when we do have multiple wallpapers, you'll be able to set that from there. Well, I'll be able to, um, whenever it comes to actual gameplay, there's going to be an in-game way to do it. Um, society, I can now save the game, which is cool. I can force the game to save. Um, now that is going to do it synchronously. Um, I think. Actually, no it won't. Uh, but as you can see at the bottom here, the console has said writing data stores, which is the game's way of saying that we're writing the entire world state to a database, and that database is the save file. Um, and of course I can clear the social feed, I can set the date and time uh, if I want to, uh, but I don't need to. Um, and then I can open a dialog window, there's nothing new there. What is new is the network debug section. Inside here, you can actually see all of the internet service providers that are spawned into the game. So right now there's a test ISP. If I click on the test ISP, I can see all of its connected customers, its networks. And the test ISP is the only ISP in the game, and I'm the only network in the game, so there's me. Um, but you can see a little bit of information about the ISP, what its name is, that it's an ISP. Um, and whether or not it's a local device, which obviously it's not. Um, but you can see that there are connected nodes. Michael is one of them. And if I go into Michael, you'll see that I actually have a public IP address because I have a network. And actually I got the same network address that I got in my previous save file. That tells me that my random seed is working perfectly. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, Great. Uh, but you can see that I have the IP address of 123 or 123.190.13.128. That is my public IP address in game. And you can see that I have connected or er, connected nodes as well. I have a local router. And this router has a public IP actually it doesn't have a public IP. It's a local device. And it has the IP address of 192.168.1.1. It has the subnet of 192.168.1.0 and the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, which means that 24 bits of the IP address here, of the local IP, is the network address, and 8 bits um, is the actual device address. I'm actually doing somewhat realistic IP address assignment in the game. Um, so that's why we have subnets and subnet masks. In fact, in the real world, if you go into your command line and type in IP config, you will get a similar looking screen. Um, for example, well, there's IPv6, but you can see that my computer here has an IPv4 address of 192.168.1, or .2 in this case, .189. That's a static IP that I have set on my router. But you can see that here that I have a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, and a sub or an, an, a default gateway of 192.168.2.1. That is my router, and I can take this subnet mask and I can look. Okay, well, if I consider the first 24 bits, that's going to be the first three numbers in the default gateway, which is going to be 192.168.2, and then the next number, because there are no bits set in the subnet mask, that's going to be zero, and that's what the game is telling you. Um, so that is pretty handy, but also I can look and see that there's a device here called U. That's a bug, it should be named after your host name, not U. Um, but you can see that it has 
or it's a local device. It's a laptop because that's what the player device spawns in as. It's a laptop. Um, you can see that it is the player device. So this is me. Um, and then my IP address it, or my subnet is the same as my local router, 192.168.1.0, same subnet mask, different local IP address, I am 192.168.1.3, that's a bug, that should be 2, not 3. Uh, but anyway, I can go back, if you're wondering why there's two back buttons, uh, the one at the bottom takes you to the previous network node, the one that th at the top closes right out of the network debug screen altogether and takes you back to the main debug menu. Anyway. Now that we've seen how that all works, basically what I'm doing is I, I'm, I'm creating a web, a, a web internally of all the IP addresses and interfaces and they're all connected together. Um, so that's what that tool lets me see. It lets me see that web and how it's all connected and what all the addresses are and all that stuff. Um, anyway, um, in terms of commands that, that I've added in this build since the live stream, uh, mainly I've only added the ping command. I'm going to be adding two or three others: nmap, tracert, dig, and I'm also going to be adding uh, what was it? Oh, ifconfig for interface config. Ifconfig, I believe, right now just shows broken information. Yeah, my IP address is not 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.1, that's a, or 0 0.0.0.3, that's a bug. I'll have to fix that. Um, but anyway, um, that's for telling you about your uh, your local or local network interface, uh, yeah, ET and 0. Despite this being a laptop, it is in fact connected to the internet through Ethernet because I'm a hacker. Anyway, um, the ping command, how does that work? Well, let's start by pinging 127.0.0.1, which, if you don't know, is actually a hard-coded loopback address. This will always point back to your own computer, no matter what. And as you can see, I'm pinging it, and I'm getting replies from my local computer. Well, my local in-game computer. What this is telling you is it's actually telling you how fast the link speed is. And by link speed, I mean the socially distant networking simulation actually simulates the latency of the internet in the real world. Because if you think about the internet, there is almost always going to be some amount of latency in an internet connection. It takes time for the signals to, you know, go across the cable or the fiber connection. It takes time for Wi-Fi signals to propagate. It takes time for your router to process things. And what happens is the more cables, the more fiber connections, the more Wi-Fi connections, the more physical connections between your computer and the destination computer you're trying to talk to, the more of those connections there are, the more latency there's going to be. It's just, that's how physics works. And socially distant respects that. So if I try to ping something that's outside of my network, not that there is anything to really ping, the time that the ping command shows is going to be longer. And the longer that time is, well, the slower the connection is going to be. So that's, that's pretty important. And also I did notice that there is actually a slight variance in how long each hop is, each how long each ping is. That's actually unintended, but I'm going to keep that in the game because that actually gives it a sense of realism. Um, that gives it that's get that kind of that kind of implements jitter, which is this other really annoying concept of the internet uh, that basically. Uh, it's really hard for me to explain honestly, but basically it means that just because you have Just because it says that it takes two milliseconds to go between your computer and the target device Doesn't mean it necessarily always will take two milliseconds. It might take a little bit more. It may take a little bit less That's caused by pander and I love to see that socially distant has accidentally gained a pander 
a, a, a freaking header simulation and it's network code. That's great. I love that. But anyway, that's the ping command. That That's pinging your local computer, which isn't exactly useful. But uh, what happens if I ping my router? Well, it will actually ping it. And you can see here that there is quite a lot more time between me pinging the router and me pinging my own computer. Um, now, it's way slower than the real world, but that's because there's a lot of complex code going on that isn't actually happening in the real world. But that's okay, this is a game. Um, I'm not expecting anyone to stream YouTube through the game's internet simulation, but I do also want there to be a somewhat realistic delay, and this gives us that delay. Now let's try pinging our actual network at the ISP level. 123.190.13.128. I am actually gaining a really great memory of longer numbers like this. That is insane. Uh, but you can see that it is in fact pinging that, and the time has pretty much doubled. We're now talking 120 milliseconds per ping. I can actually explain what's going on there. It has... Uh, I'll explain that when we get into the code. There is a reason that this time is jumping up almost exponentially as we as we add more hops to it. Um, yeah, there's a reason. Um, anyway. So that's the ping command. Uh, yeah. Pretty freaking cool. Now, of course, it's not really hacking yet. Hacking is going to come when we implement firewalls and hackables. That's what I'm going to be doing next. But we do have... We do have the DNS system in the game. There are no domain names in the in-game world right now. I have to add those. But what there is, is localhost. I noted earlier that 127.0.0.1 is your loopback address. That will always map back to your own computer no matter what. Localhost is the same thing, but it's a domain name. And it does in fact work. You can see that it does map to 127.0.0.1 and we do get a ping. So that's pretty cool. That is the localhost command. Um, or localhost command, that is the localhost host name. That will always map back to your computer. Uh, or whatever computer you're running the command from. Um, so yeah, that is the ping command. It works pretty freaking well. We have DNS, we have a realistic network delay. Um, what else do we have in the networking system right now? Well, not much. Uh, but what I can show you is the actual code for it. Now, I'm gonna warn you. It's kind of a mess, but it is also kind of cool, and I can explain some of it, having written it about half an hour ago. Um, so let's hop into, let's see where it is, network simulation. Um, basically, all of the networking code, all of the delays and everything like that, comes from this coroutine right here. If you don't know what a coroutine is in Unity, it's a way to run asynchronous code, but in a way more game dev friendly way. Um, it, it, it's way better than C Sharp's built in async code, I'm not gonna lie, but basically uh, coroutines are a way to run background tasks in Unity. What they really are is uh, being able to split a massive algorithm into multiple frames. Um, so each frame a little bit of this code will run. And you can see all of the different breakpoints of this algorithm by looking for yield return statements. Every time I write yield return here, um, Unity is going to pause execution of this coroutine, render a frame, and start executing the coroutine again until it reaches another yield return. So that's what this is. It's very handy. This allows me to run this massive, complex pathfinding operation across multiple frames. Um, so how does it all work? Well, uh, what we have to do is we first need to find our network interface, which does take a little bit of time. We have to we have to actually map the network interface back to its original simulation node. 
And if that doesn't happen, we we basically say to the player that you don't have internet access. You don't have a network interface in your computer. What are you doing? Um, your real life computer might do the same thing if you try to use the internet without having a network card attached to it. But most computers in this day and age have a network card attached to it. Anyway, um, uh, really, if you get if you get this catch block here, there's probably a bug in the game. I'll be honest, but I still have to do that check either way. Anyway, um, then what we do is we say if the IP address is 120 or er, is 0x7f000001, then we say that the network has been resolved to the source node, which is the computer that started this network operation in the first place. 7f000001 is hexadecimal for 127.0.0.1. So this is the local host. Next, uh, what we do is we say, okay, if we have not completed an operation, if the operation is still in progress, then what we're going to do is we're going to create a list of visited network nodes and um, nodes that we can backtrack to. This is a pathfinding algorithm, and it's a very shitty one, now honestly, but it does get the job done. So what we do is we start, uh, we start at the beginning. We start with the current node being the source node, so the computer that's doing the network connection. And we say, while we are still looking for a network, or while we're still looking for a destination node, so while the network operation is still in progress, we're going to do a whole bunch of stuff. First, we're going to check if the current node's public IP address is the same as the address we'd like to talk to. If it is, then we can complete the network pathfinding operation with this node being the destination node. We've found our destination network, we're good to go. Then we say, okay, if this network node has a local IP address and the, that, or, and the current node is either the default gateway of the source node or is in the connection list of the default gateway of the source node. AKA what this means is if the net if the current node is in the same network as the source node, then what we'll do is we'll say we'll check the local IP address of the node and and check if it's the same as the destination address. This allows you to talk to devices in your local network. And if we do find an IP address in the local network, then we'll set the operation as complete. We don't need to do anything else. Um, then what happens is we have not found any nodes. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to mark this current node as visited because we're about to start a hop. Um, in fact, I'm going to actually get rid of this yield return here because this creates a delay. An artificial delay, actually. Um, so we'll see how the code works with that removed. Uh, but uh, what we do is we consider nodes that are connected directly to this node. Now, for local devices, this is going to be absolutely nothing. It's going to fall back to the default gateway, as we will soon see. But in the, in the case of a gateway or an internet service provider, this will consider um, one of the connected devices or another ISP. And it'll visit that node. And it'll run all of this code all over again for that node. Um, and what happens if we've exhausted all of our neighbor nodes, all of our directly connected nodes? Well, we're going to test our default gateway. Uh, this is similar to how the real world works. If your computer cannot figure out how to talk to another IP address on the network, it will fall back to your default gateway. Um, so this is what we're doing. We're checking if the default gateway of this node, first of all, that it exists, and second of all, that it has not been visited yet, and if it has not been visited yet, then we're going to visit it and run the code for the default gateway. Um, then, if we've visited all of our connected nodes, and we've visited our default gateway, and we still have not found an, a destination node, we're going to backtrack. And if we can't backtrack, then the network is unreachable, so we're going to time out. I haven't shown you guys that code, but that is what's introducing the delay. All of that code right there. Um, 
And that pathfinding algorithm is annoying because it will try to consider all of the local devices before ever trying to talk to the uh, outside internet. And most of the time you won't be talking to a local device, so it's going to be really slow. Anyway, let's continue career, and let's try pinging our network IP. Or first of all, pinging our router. Ooh. That's not good. Um, it is not running the command. That is great. What happened? I think what happened was... Oh, key not found excitement. That is not good. Okay, there are bugs in this, but, um, yeah, this is a new one. Uh, oh god. I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, I'll have to look into that. Um, I don't see anything where this would have broken. That's strange. Um,. That is really strange. It can't get a network interface. Okay. Good to know. I'll have to look into that. It should have found one. The login shell is spawned in, so why did it why did it not find an interface? Well, I'll have to look into that. It seems that the interfaces are broken if you continue your career instead of starting a new career. So let's try Richie from Pokemon and then Richie. And ping our home address. And this works. And as you can see, the time is significantly less terrifying. Um, so that's good to know. Um, so yeah, part of that was just an artificial delay that didn't need to be there. Anyway, I'll have to look into that bug, but that's going to do it for this dev update. I wanted to show you guys the uh, network code in the game and how it all works and, and that it all works. But this is the first step towards gameplay. Uh, we need the networking simulation to do all the hacking stuff in the game. And we're almost at that point where I can start spawning in hackables and, and, and setting up the gameplay logic for all of those. Um, so yeah, um, that's going to do it for this video. As always, I've been Michael. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Uh, can't wait to do the next dev update, and um, I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.